Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in to Joe Knows. So glad you would put some time aside to listen to, uh, to this. We're in a series on Q&A, question and answer. So I've got a couple of questions and I wanna answer them for you right now. So the first question is, can women be pastors? Okay, so first of all, I'd like to describe to you what a pastor is. A pastor is a shepherd, uh, a person that, that cares for people. So can women be pastors? Well, let's maybe before we use the title, let's talk about pastoring. So pastoring is caring for people. Can women care for people? You better believe it. <laughs> and they probably do a better job than most men. Naturally, women are nurturers and take care of people. But I think the heart of the question is, can a woman hold the position of pastor in the church? Now, People have different, differing opinions on this, but I believe the answer is emphatically yes. I don't see any reason why a, a woman couldn't fulfill that role. And I have worked with many women who have been pastors in churches that I was a part of and even churches that I led. So obviously I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but there is a distinction that I would make, and that would be the position of lead pastor. Now again, this is my opinion. Uh, I know churches that have lead pastors, and you know, if that works for them, that's great. But for me, I'm not as comfortable with a woman being the lead pastor, and I'll tell you why, because in the scriptures, it talks about a woman not leading a man. Uh, and it has to do not with cultural things, it has to do with the way sin entered into the world. And whereas Adam disobeyed, the woman was deceived. And in, in one of the epistles written by Paul to Timothy, he talks about this. So um, I think that as far as I understand the scriptures to speak, that a woman can be a pastor as long as there's a male head over her. So like for instance, in our church, I'm the lead pastor and we have women in pastoral roles and I have no problem uh, calling our worship leader Tanya, Pastor Tanya, if we want to do that. I don't really like the term pastor because to me, it's really, when I say I don't like the term, I don't like being called Pastor Joe. And, and the reason is it kind of differentiates and it gets away from the fact that really these positions in the kingdom, leadership positions are servant positions. So I have no problem with a woman serving in the role of a pastor, certainly pastoring, serving in the role of pastor, but I would draw the line, me personally, I would not be comfortable appointing a woman as the lead pastor, as the main person in charge of the whole congregation. As long as there is a man that's over her, I, that helps me to, and by the way, these are not my opinions, this is my view of the scripture. So I think that the, viewing the scriptures, I, I can be consistent and, and before that, and I am, but that position of lead pastor, I'm not as comfortable with it. So hopefully that's helpful to you, but I will tell you this, uh, I am uh, all for women being in leadership. Women are greatly gifted. I have a daughter who has a strong gift of leadership, and I'm not in any way, um, I'm not for keeping women down in any way, shape, or form. So, but I do let the scriptures guide me and uh, that's why I have that position. The next question is a little bit of a tougher one. And the question is, why does God allow disaster and calamity among his people and in the world? So this is a really uh, challenging question because I think sometimes our misconceptions about God and the Bible, it causes us to impose certain things on, on the scriptures and on God that are not necessarily supposed to be there. For instance, God is love. Is God love? Yes, he's love. But we would impose upon that many would say that means he would never allow a person to say suffer or for something bad to happen to a good person. So when a person thinks that they're a good person and something bad happens to them, to their family, we struggle with that. We don't know how to reconcile the fact that a good God would allow something negative, something bad to happen to a good person, particularly if that is a, a person is a follower of Christ, a child of God. And I, I don't think you find that in the scriptures. There's plenty of suffering uh, that we see happening to Christians. I mean, I would imagine Stephen, the first martyr, the first Christian martyr, I would imagine he, he might, he probably had a wife, I don't think we know for sure, might have had children, he certainly had a mother and a father, and, 
Can you imagine uh, Stephen as a follower of Jesus Christ being killed by stoning just because he believed in the gospel? So someone would say in that situation, how could something bad happen to this good person named Stephen? Well, you can see that connecting the two dots, something bad and God not being good, that's not, you can't be very well consistent on that. Um, most people that have lived, you know, have died. <laughs> okay, so that means every good person that's ever lived still had to face death. And sometimes people died sooner than, than maybe we thought they should. So the question really becomes, why is there evil in the world? And does that evil, are we, ins as Christians, are we insulated from that evil? So the question is, why is there evil in the world? Evil is in the world because of sin. And sin was introduced to the world, um, even though Eve, I just referred to her, uh, the woman was deceived and maybe somewhat innocently was tricked by, by Satan, by the serpent and ate of the fruit. Adam just plain disobeyed. And as far as we understand, Adam was the, represent, the representative of the human race, and he chose evil, and that caused sin to come into the world. And, and the one that introduced sin to the world was Satan. So the reason that we see bad things happening, there's sickness, there's pain, there are calamities, there are hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, fires, uh, people get cancer, they get COVID. They get all kinds of illnesses. There are car accidents that cause people's death. Is God's original plan did not allow for any of the, those things. But when sin entered into the world, it, it, it brought about a slow but sure corruption of the perfect world that God created. So when we see these calamities taking place, it's really because of the sin that's in the world. And now you say, well, can't God remove the sin so we wouldn't have bad things happen? Yes, he can and he will. But if he did that, I became a Christian in 1980. If he would have removed sin, which is the root of all of the calamities that happened, if he removed sin from the world in 1979, it would have removed me as well because I was a sinner who did not know uh, salvation through Jesus Christ. So, um, and if he removed sin today, um, I, many people that don't know Christ, they would be lost. So God allows the results of sin to continue on in the world because he is wanting many people to come to salvation. It says, the Lord is not slow concerning his promises as some count slowness. But he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. There is a day that God is going to remove sin from the world, and in that day, he will restore the heavens and the earth, and then there'll eventually be a new heavens and a new earth. When there is no sin, there'll be no suffering, no calamities, no death, no tears, no pain. But until then, he allows those things to continue so people like me and people like you can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and can be saved and can someday return to that garden-like... See, when God created Adam and Eve, he put them in a garden. There was no sin, but they had the ability to choose sin, to choose to disobey God. They made that choice. It really uh, threw everything in this world off, but someday God will restore that. And when he restores it, there will be no hope for people that have rejected Christ. So I believe he delays uh, restoring the world the way he wants his coming and his establishing his kingdom. He delays that because he wants to give people the chance to come to Christ. In the meanwhile, we deal with the effects of sin. But for the Christian, sin and death and calamity can't really touch us, can't touch our spirit and our soul. It can affect us in our earthly life. But listen. God will walk through with us through anything that we face and someday everything that happens on earth will pass away and we will again return to be with Christ, with God, with the Holy Spirit for all eternity in a world that has no calamity because there is no sin. So I hope that helps you. Um, God bless you. 
And if you struggle with that, it's easy to think about it when you're not the one going through the calamity. When you do go through the calamity, just know that God will carry you through and someday he'll eradicate sin and in so doing all of the bad things that sin has brought with us. And if you want to be mad at someone, let's be mad at Satan. And in the name of Jesus, let's destroy him and his works and let's follow Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you next time.